All right, we're live. Hello, everybody. It's Dubs OT with JD, John Dickinson. Greg Silver is here as well. We are live on YouTube and Twitch and the KMBR Twitter slash X stream. And we're coming to you following another Warrior loss, this one on the road, where the Dubs had been playing much better basketball, 11 of the last 14 away from Chase, have gone in the win column. Uh, but the Warriors do lose this one to the Timberwolves, 114 to 110 is the final and uh, a lot to get into uh, about this game uh, Greg as the Warriors do get outscored in the fourth quarter 36 29 they get outscored in the second half I, I think you know there's a lot of minutia to get into about this game the Warriors did have a nine point lead into the first quarter they led by 12 in the first half uh, there were you know, coaching decisions as far as Steph Curry. And, and I think we're kind of aligned on that at the beginning of the fourth quarter, uh, a lot of different things to get into. I, I think though, when you look at the second half and this was a point I made at the end of the third quarter, the Timberwolves as the game went on, got their offense going. Uh, they, they scored 18 in the first. Yes. But 28 in the second 32 in the third 36 in the fourth. So the Warriors gave up 68 in the second half and that ultimately is is what you know does them in uh as they do get outscored 68 to, to 56 in the second half uh and lose at 114 to 110 so big game obviously i mean this is the, the warriors have to get any and all possible games they can between now and three weeks from today when the regular season will end uh, for them. And, you know, this was an opportunity where they played well enough to win the game and didn't. And, you know, for all of the discussion, Greg, about bad home losses, like I, I thought, you know, tonight was a much better effort from them than, I don't know, any of the last six home games that they've played, I think, for the most part. But you're playing a good team on the road. Uh, and you wind up uh, still losing. So as people begin to join us here on on YouTube, Twitch, and and X, uh, I'll just kind of get your general thoughts on the on the game, and then we'll get into you know some of the things that I had jotted down as far as as far as you know throughout the game as I as I often do. Yeah, before I give you a lot of my thoughts, I'm first going to ask you a question, and the chat you can chime in as well. It's not a trick question. Do teams get their offense going against the Warriors because? it's a fluke and there are certain weird percentage spreads or is it because the Warriors don't defend the perimeter? Yeah, it was that tonight. I mean, it was, it, and, and that was the point. And maybe I should have made that point a little bit more bluntly. The, the point was the, the Warriors defense got worse as the game went on and it was pretty bad in allowing the Timberwolves a bunch of wide open looks from three, which is not new. Uh, the Timberwolves hit 21 of 40 from three point range. That's 52.5%. That also uh, a telling story in, in this game. And, and, you know, early it was Nas Reed killing the Warriors as he often does. I shouldn't say often always does. Uh, he ended up with, with 20 and, you know, he prevented, I thought, the, the Warriors from maybe being up 20 in the first half because he came in and was making everything. I think five of his first six from deep. I think he had 17 in the first half uh, of, of his 20. And then Anthony Edwards got going at the end of the second quarter. And that helped the Timberwolves, you know, kind of hang around uh, basically down eight at, at the half after the Warriors had, had been up by as many as 12 Warriors had answers throughout the second and third quarters. Uh, but then in the fourth quarter, they didn't have answers. And in part, they didn't have answers because I, I'm, I'm just going to come out and say it. Uh, you know, Steve Kerr bungled it tonight. Like he flat out bungled Stephen Curry's minutes tonight and, and the rotation. Uh, you go back to the, the beginning of the fourth quarter and the Warriors are up 81-78 going to the fourth quarter they have uh, Stephen Curry sitting to begin the quarter as as he often does and and feel you know, full disclosure I'll I'll bring in what you had said in our our text back and forth uh you said hey I think I would start Steph in the fourth quarter and I kind of got caught up so I don't think I replied immediately to it but I saw it and when I saw it I thought yeah I don't think I would do that tonight because it's a long trip but I mean Kerr called timeout uh, the first of, of what were two timeouts after uh, the Timberwolves had, had gone from three down to, to four ahead. And I'm going back through the play-by-play -play now because I want to get the exact times 
of this correct. So the Warriors were uh, up 81-78, and then they were down 90-86. to So right off the bat, uh, they go from 81-78, so it was, what, a 12-5 start for the, for the Timberwolves in the fourth quarter in the first three minutes and four seconds. Conley hit a layup. Steve Kerr called timeout at 8.56. It's a four-point game. So while I didn't think he should have started the fourth quarter, when Kerr called that timeout at 8.56, Stephen Curry should have been in the freaking game, and you had the number. Uh, He had played 22 minutes, I think, in the first three quarters. He played 22. So if you play him nine from, you know, the, the final nine at that point, he ends up basically playing, you know, what, 31, 32, 32 minutes, depending upon, you know, rounding up and exact numbers and, and all of that. So I was stunned when the Warriors called that timeout, stunned that Steph was not back in the game at that point with 8.56 to go. He did bring Jonathan Kaminga back in. He did bring Draymond Green back in. Uh, and uh, Kaminga had, had quickly hit uh, a shot, but then they gave up a Kyle Anderson layup. And you know, bottom line, in the two minutes and four seconds that they did not bring Steph back in at 8.56, the Timberwolves pushed the lead up to eight. Uh, so it went from 90 to 86 to 97, 89, and the Warriors found themselves down by eight. They call another timeout. Then Curry's back in the game uh, with them down by eight, and they were able to to climb all the way back to tie the game at 104 with uh, what would have been 328 to go before uh, the back and forth, and we can get into everything that happened in the final minutes there. But to, I don't think Steve Kerr bungles things nearly as much as sometimes it seems on social media. But, you know, I've been very clear that there's been a couple of times with Kaminga this year where I think he did. Uh, I, I think, you know, when you're playing well and the Warriors were playing well in this game, forget about the opponent and Steph is playing well, get his ass back in the game and try to win it. We're talking about the difference between two minutes. And I know it's a long trip and I know the Warriors are going to play five on the road and then one at home. And then they're coming back. 2000 miles away to the center of the country. And then they're, and it's every other day or back to, you had a shot to win this one and you're going to be tireder Wednesday in Orlando and Friday in Charlotte and a week from today in San Antonio. And when you go to Houston on April 4th and Dallas on April 5th. So, you know, this is one where again, uh, I don't do it willy nilly. uh, But when I think Kerr makes a mistake, I'll say it. And I think Steve Kerr bungled that one tonight. Steph should have been back in the game at the 856 mark and he didn't do it. And if he had been as well as the Warriors were playing, I think they might've stolen the game. 100% 100% agree with you. I don't know if uh, Greg Papa's commercial is coming through in the studio I'm in right now, but yeah, but that's okay. Ah, uh, yeah, you know, spicy Bucatini is one of his all time favorites. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm right there with you, JD. I think some of the current criticism this year has been a little bit ridiculous, a little bit overblown. I don't know what was going on tonight. And I know I said from the get go, I would have started uh, Steph to start the fourth, only played 22 minutes. It was a good game and a good effort that they were playing. Really good defense, a lot more focused. I thought Andrew Wiggins had a really effective first three quarters. And it's really disheartening and deflating that this game, I wasn't entirely lost at this moment, but to have the first four possessions of the fourth quarter be turnover Minnesota three, turnover Minnesota three, that erased what was a really strong 36 minutes of showing like it erased it. It just wiped it away. And you sat Steph too long. If you didn't want to start him in the fourth, that's fine. I get it. Like Kerr knows his players better than we do. And Curry has looked a little fatigued, but to not put him in two minutes into the fourth, when it's clearly going sideways. Yeah. Minus seven in the first three minutes, you're minus seven in the first three minutes. It's starting to get away. You got to bring it back in. And like I said, he hadn't even played 23 minutes of the game. So you play him all 12, and that's 35, which is, you know, heavy, but nothing crazy, nothing nothing insane. Uh, and it's a game you need, and it's a big possible momentum game. Uh, so I just don't really get it, to be honest. And, I mean, 
Here's the other unfortunate reality is we know they can't defend the perimeter well. Like, that's been the story of the season. They're not dynamic on offense in the fourth quarter. It is Curry and Clay taking tough and contested shots. Clay has been a little more streaky than Steph, but even for Steph, when you have really tough contested shots and your team depends on you to make that at an inhuman rate, you're probably not going to win a lot of games. I thought the Lakers game that they won on the road recently, that was one where I actually thought the fourth quarter offense was very dynamic and everybody was getting involved and Draymond was dishing out to Kaminga at the perfect time and Trace Jackson Davis was there effective in the second half. So, uh, but 36 points allowed in the fourth quarter, those first six didn't entirely lose them the game, but I think it effectively did. And then Gary Payton missing a layup uh, that would have given the Warriors a lead back again. That one thing didn't lose them the game, but that sort of thing is what adds up and why bad teams are bad teams, why losing teams are losing teams and why winning teams don't do that. Yeah, I it, absolutely right. I agree with you wholeheartedly on the on the fourth quarter offense. Like they just don't have enough players uh, to to be that that can create, uh, you know, in in the fourth quarter. Like they just can't. You know, they used to be able to kind of change their game plan when they needed to, when they had Steph and Clay at you know, much higher levels. And they had Durant, like Durant was always the guy that they had that they could just put the ball in his hands and run a little bit more. Yeah. Just run a little ISO. And that was when he was at the peak of his powers and he could get a 17 footer basically, or, or kick it to Steph or Clay who the defense had to obviously be worried about, Uh, you know, or Draymond could make a play for one of the three. And, you know, so that, you know, obviously the Warriors made it through uh, the bulk of their, their run, by just having uh, things stacked against the opponent in terms of, uh, you know, the the ability to execute gets a lot easier when you have, you know, three players who are, are future Hall of Famers and, and all-time great offensive players and all-time great shooters, really, all three of them, uh, not just great offensive players, but shooters specifically who you can get the ball to in, in those situations. But I think, you know, forget about that. I mean, that's the heyday of, of the Warriors uh, you know, this team really, I mean, you know, Clay isn't who he used to be. And you still have to run plays for Clay to make sure he gets good shots, not bad shots. And by and, the way, I don't know what you think on this. Sure. Obviously, that last play, the potential tying shot for Clay wasn't a great look, but I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't know how much better you're gonna get besides Steph taking an equally contested shot. Like they're just yeah. not dynamic when you need a three. Yeah, I didn't have a problem with the play, and and you're talking about the play. Uh, at, you know, Clay misses. They're down one thirteen to one ten with eleven nine. They throw it into Clay, uh, or they throw it in. They get it to Clay, left wing open, pretty good look at a three. He misses it uh, before Edwards goes down and hits one of two free throws to to uh, ice the game at at one fourteen to one ten, which was the final score. I actually thought that was a pretty good play. Uh, I know some, why the hell didn't they draw, you know, why didn't they draw it up for Steph? Well, I mean, you know, the Timberwolves are going to be defending Steph. I also think, you know, there was probably too much time. Chris Finch, to my knowledge, just my recollection from watching a lot of NBA games, he's a foul up three guy. 11.9 is probably too early to do it. And by the time Clay took the shot, it was 10 still. So you have to go quick, even especially because you don't have a timeout. You have to take the shot relatively quickly because you want to give yourself a chance to to get an offensive rebound if you do miss the shot uh, and the ball kind of kicks around and all that. So I, I, I didn't have a problem with the look. You could make the case. Uh, I mean, Clay, you know, three of 11 from three. It wasn't his hottest night, although you look at, at Clay. I mean, he was the Warriors' second leading scorer in this one uh, with 16 points. And obviously, uh, other than Steph, Clay's the guy that, that you want to be taking uh, three pointers uh, really at any point in the game on a team that, that doesn't have uh, a heck of a lot of, of great shooting. So, uh, yeah, I didn't have a problem with that. Uh, again, you know, you, you look at this game overall and, and we can get into some of the things, uh, you know, the Warriors after leading early in, in points off turnovers, they end up losing the points off turnovers battle. The, the Timberwolves had nine turnovers in the first quarter. They had seven for the rest of the game. 
So again, to the point about, and I, I didn't think, I know on the television broadcast, there was a lot of discussion about the fact that the Warriors were really d up. I actually thought that was total bullshit, to be honest. I, I thought, and uh, yeah, I can say that because we're on YouTube and, and Twitch and all that and not live on the radio. I thought it was total hogwash. Uh, I thought the Timberwolves came out completely unserious. Like they were just unfocused. Uh, they, it was almost all right. Sunday afternoon game again, you know, the evening six o'clock local time, you know, evening game, it just, you know, Warriors are good. Like they did not have the effort that we've seen a lot of teams put against the Warriors at chase center. Uh, right. It was just kind of like they, this was kind of a game on the schedule that the Timberwolves had to get through. So I thought they came out and just, just, we're kind of going through the motions and being a little sloppy and lazy and the Warriors took full advantage. I thought the Warriors were engaged and the Warriors were focused, but I don't think the Warriors were like locking them down defensively in the first quarter. I I just think that the Timberwolves were really freaking sloppy to the point where Chris Finch can kind of get in their ass a little bit and say, knock it off. And they, you know, had, seven turnovers for the rest of the game (laughs) over three quarters, which is obviously excellent. And then they got good shots. And then we saw as the game went on that the Warriors were not able to defend them nearly as well as they did when the Timberwolves were basically just gifting them the basketball uh, like they did in the, in, in the first quarter. So um, yeah, when you look at that uh, I I think, you know, that was a key uh, to this one as we kind of move away from some of the down the stretch stuff. I'm not finished with the down the stretch stuff, but that was just something that I've kind of put in my notes. Uh, The, the Timberwolves, obviously the three point shooting uh, allowed them to hang in the game. We talked about, uh, we talked about Nas Reed and the six for eight, but everybody else was hitting threes too. I mean, even if you take Nas Reed out, they're they're fifteen of thirty two from everybody else. I mean, Anthony Edwards, hit, Alexander Walker, yeah, Nikhil Alexander Walker hit three of five. McLaughlin hit one. Morris hit two of four. Conley hit three of seven. Uh, I mean, Jaden McDaniel's hit two of six uh, in, in this one. I mean, everybody was making them basically for that that was taking them. Uh, in this one for, in fact, I'm, I'm looking, I guess Jaden McDaniels was their worst percentage and he was two for six uh, on, on the game uh, among those who who took threes. And, and basically everybody other than Kyle Anderson and Rudy Gobert took threes uh, in this game for, for Minnesota. So yeah, the three point shot, uh, obviously uh, did, Warriors weren't bad from three, uh, fewer attempts than I think we're used to 14 to 36 uh, the Warriors did get to the free throw line a lot. 20 of 26 had a plus seven ad- advantage there, but it, it wasn't nearly enough to be able to to offset the advantage that the Timberwolves had from three. I mean, we're talking about a 21 point advantage in a game where they win 114 to, to 110. Uh, again, if you get Curry's if you get Curry back in the game sooner, I think you may have had an opportunity to to steal it by not getting down eight before you get him back in. And if you don't get eight, get down eight before you bring him back in, then maybe you wind up up four in a, with about three minutes left. And the Timberwolves really, I thought for the most part, uh, for a good chunk of the game, really, I think until maybe the middle of the third quarter, even though the Timberwolves were making shots, I always kind of keep a barometer of who's playing a winning game tonight and who's not like who are, which team's playing a winning game versus not playing. And I, I thought for the most part, the Warriors actually played a winning game tonight more than the Timberwolves did. But uh, again, the Timberwolves shot it well. And I thought Steve Kerr did him, did him a favor by not putting Steph Curry back in the game at, at the nine minute mark. I, I know just from, from reading uh, and scanning Twitter post game, uh, I know Steve Kerr did disagree. Uh, I, I can see here uh, via Anthony Slater. And look, I, again, he's just wrong on this one. I, I get the answer, and, and he was asked about it probably by Slater. But but the quote, uh, if you want to say Steph playing 30 or 32 minutes was the, the difference in a win or a loss, I totally disagree. So there you go. And uh, I mean, I can, I can maybe listen to it. You want to talk while I listen to it or you want, you want to listen to it? While yeah, I talk? No, sure. e- either sure. way. Uh, I, mean, I, I, I mean, one other thing I wanted to add yeah. as I try to like get the lights going back in this building, uh, just that kind of day today. <laughs> That's but okay. We lo- we love our uh, dimly lit studios here. At least I'm not looking too orange right now, but um, what I was going to say is that with the Warriors, like again, you can talk about the Timberwolves coming out not being serious. They're sleepwalking. 
And that was true. I think they didn't show up and be very serious to the game. But the problem is they can get away with it because they're a better team. And the Warriors just gave them one window of getting back in the game and a terrible, terrible, terrible few minutes to start the fourth quarter. All of a sudden, it's a game again, whereas the Warriors are the type of team where when they come out and don't take it seriously, that creates a hole that they're never able to climb out of unless Steph Curry does a 60 ball. And by the way, in the game he did score 60 this year, they lost in overtime. So we just got to admit it. They're not very good. As I said to all the succession fans out there today, in the words of Logan Roy, to the Warriors of this year, I love you, but you are not serious people. Yeah, it. They, look, they and I, and I caught the gist. I, I missed the first part of of what you said. But I, th- I think I, I caught the gist of it as I was trying to to listen to the Kirk cut as well. And and I'll paraphrase that first. He he disagreed as as we read as far as you know not playing Steph more than you know thirty thirty two. He didn't think that was a big difference in the game. He also said trying to get him as much rest as possible. Uh, he mentioned the game Friday night, and he also. Uh, you know, said as long as they were hanging in there, they were going to try to get them a, a, a couple of more minutes. So uh, again, uh, that's a that's a it's a whiff. It's it's a whiff. It's a miss. Again, to me, you got to look. I understand the minutes thing. I understand all of these games every other day with the back to back here between now and the end of the regular season. Uh, and like I get all of that, but when you have opportunities right in front of you when you're playing well. And this team tends to play better against good teams on the road. Like, like if you're, you know, and Minnesota was not fully locked in tonight, you had a shot to get this one. So I think you have to go for that one when you have a shot to get it. And you know what? In Miami Tuesday, you might be down 13 in the fourth quarter. And it's like, you know what? If you're down 13 in the fourth quarter after you've won tonight, then Maybe Steph doesn't come back until the six minute mark in that game, uh, you know, or, you know, if, you know, if you're in Orlando and, and you're, and you're getting blown, like you never know how it's going to play out on a trip. Like there may be a game that's a blowout that you don't expect to be, whether you play better or play worse. So I, I think when the first game of the trip, you got to try to go all in and, and you got to try to, to get the win. Um, as far as your, and I do put that uh, you can put that comment back up and we are going to get to some comments. I've here seen on, another on comment that is making me laugh. I know everyone's okay. in a reactive state, but all good. No. I'm just, yeah. Gotta laugh Go ahead. At this one a little bit. Put Cheers. It, yeah. It's all good. It's all funny, but <laughs> yeah, that's not true. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, and especially funny tonight, but that, yeah, uh, I'm not even going to react to that one, but, uh, and, and I do want to come back to what you were saying as I was listening to the, the curse sound, uh, here and and again, thank you to everybody who's watching Dubs OT with JD and Greg Silver. We're going to keep this thing going till I, I don't know seven forty five, eight o'clock. It is a YouTube Twitch uh, stream only here uh, tonight, so uh, we appreciate everybody who's uh, chiming in and watching. We're going to get to as as many comments as possible. Frustrating loss, Warriors one fourteen to one ten. They lose to the Timberwolves. So a couple of things to get to. Andis Brown, our buddy. Uh, 100% Greg, because like you guys have said in the past, the Warriors don't have another level to reach. Wolves can go to another level, which the Warriors can't match. I don't disagree with that. I also don't really think the Timberwolves really got to another level tonight. I just, and, and they actually might be a team that doesn't have another level to get to. Uh, again, I don't think they did tonight. Um, I do want to go back to what you were saying and I, it's I, I I'm I like I said I heard bits and pieces of it, but I I'm, I'm guessing the gist and, and correct me if I'm wrong here. Uh, feel free to embellish, but the the gist of it was basically the Warriors, if they have a really bad stretch, it's going to do them in, and other teams just have more margin for error and and if and you know ha- have the ability to to not play well, then find their game. And then kind of put the Warriors in a position where they have to match a certain level. And then the Warriors just aren't good enough to be able to match that level uh, like they used to. Yeah. And it's, we've seen the difference between teams coming out sleepwalking against the Warriors and being able to get away with it. And the Warriors coming out sleepwalking against teams and being done for by the third quarter. So 
that was sort of the gist of it. Uh, and I think the Warriors, you know, for a lot of us, I'm guessing, have watched the Warriors since at least 2015. This cannot be an easy time if uh, you started in 2015. No shame, just saying. Um, the Warriors did this all the time when they were a top two team in the league. They would come out and just not take it seriously in a regular season game against a good opponent, and then they'd be able to crank it up or actually be focused come mid-third quarter. Even last year, to a certain degree, I thought at home they did that a good handful of times. So they just aren't that team at all. And, I mean, yeah, it's it's a tough pill to swallow for – people that are used to a decade of of lots of winning yeah and it does it, uh, you know all of these things are are short term you know as i talk about on every show there there's the short term there's the micro of tonight's game what went well what didn't why did the warriors win why did the warriors in in this case tonight lose but then there's also the big picture conversation which i do think we can have off of off of every single game and you know you look at at tonight and you know we officially put the Rockets in the race against the Warriors. They did blow out Utah. Uh, the Rockets did. I know we talked in just dubs yesterday about the fact that uh, the Rockets are playing Utah and then they're playing Portland and the Warriors have the, the game that they've just lost tonight. Then they go to Miami and basically both teams could be tied with the exact same records by the, the close of business on, on Tuesday. If the Warriors lose that game and the Rockets who are, red hot right now the Rockets have won eight in a row to get to 35 and 35 and the Warriors are just a game up at, at 36 and 34 the other thing that tonight's loss does is it puts the Warriors now two games behind the Lakers uh in you know in the race for nine and you know we already I mean they're done eight was already done they're five games out of eight so eight's done they're the Warriors are going to be nine ten or eleven it was already done but just in case just in case you didn't think it it was done uh, it, it's it's done uh, with the Warriors now 36 and, and 34 and one in three now in the last four, two and three in the last five since Stephen Curry returned. And really, they've only played two winning games. And I you know, like they just, I know they beat Memphis. I didn't think there was anything special about what they did to Memphis. Uh, you know, I, I thought they actually played better tonight than they did in Memphis or against Memphis at home. Uh, and then the two losses. So uh, again, not an excuse by any stretch, but uh, I, you know this team has not been able to get it going again off of Stephen Curry's return. Like they had it rolling. They had just beaten the Bucks. Steph goes down against Chicago. They lose that game. They lose the San Antonio game at home. They go get the win in San Antonio. They lose at Dallas. Steph comes back. You're thinking, all right, can this team still get get on a run? Uh, and you know, we, we find out, but then it winds up being uh, a matter of, all right, they get the win against the Lakers, but then it's been, it's been one and four cents, which, which obviously has been, uh, ugly and it's set the warriors down the path. Uh, it, you know, oh, oh, it's set the warriors down the path of, you know, now they're eight, you know, basically nine, nine, 10, nine, 10 or, or 11, uh, in the Western conference, uh, so yeah, I mean, stay tuned as they say, Let, let's get to some comments, uh, in, in the YouTube chat here again, Greg, I'm going to start as I often do at the, at the top, uh, here we had, we had people chiming in even before the game ended, which I, I love, uh, including, uh, Alpha, Alpha Nickelberry, uh, JD, no matter how this season ends, there have to be big changes made in the off season. I can see the dubs blowing the 10 spot, especially with how tough, this road trip is well, there's no doubt about the last part. I mean, they're playing for the 10. I mean, they're really playing for the 10 spot now. I mean, they do have a shot to get nine only because they can beat the Lakers and get the tiebreaker on, on April 9th. Uh, but they're playing for the 10. I mean, that's they're playing to. And let me just say this. If they can't get the 10, this whole season has been a colossal disaster. Like it is just a, it is, I mean, a complete and utter fail. Uh, if they, if they don't, if they don't make the play in, I should say, I think I said, if they don't make the playoffs, I mean, they're probably, they, there's a good chance they're not going to make the playoffs. Uh, but uh, if they end up 11th in the West, then, I mean, this is a complete and utter failure 
on every single level, almost don't even want to take a single positive away from it. Uh, so, I mean, we'll jump off that bridge if we need to three weeks from today uh, when the when the regular season ends. But uh, as far as the first part goes, I agree. Like I and and I I was starting to you know think with the and I know it's been in the game notes the last couple of games the fact that you know the Warriors have had I think the third most wins in the NBA since January 30th and and all of that and I you know I think it was leading the Warriors down the path of thinking that they had a little more than maybe they really did as far as next year goes like hey Think, you know, Pajemski's coming, you know, Pajemski's doing this and Kaminga's doing that. And there's a rotation now. And like, they have to, they have to take a realistic look at which path they want to go down for the future. Do they want to try to do something dramatic to get themselves back into contention for one more run? Or do they want to admit that they're no longer a championship contender going into next season and just acknowledge the fact that they're going to continue to develop Kaminga and TJD and Pajemski around Steph and around Draymond and maybe clay. We'll see, but, and they're going to get under the tax and they're just going to have a year next year where they basically admit that they're, they're going to be what they've been this year, but they're going to be okay with it from the jump. Like they need to have that real conversation because I'm finding it hard to believe that this team, I mean, I was just thinking about it. I was thinking about it earlier today. I'm thinking about, Hey, Steph, Pajemski, Wiggins, Kaminga, Draymond, TJD, maybe Clay's here or not. Even Wiggins here or not. Wiggins might not be here. Clay might not be here. Chris Paul probably won't be here. This team minus those three without adequate, replacements you could almost guarantee freaking T the Warriors are going to be 11 to 15 in the West next year. If you can't like, if you're just not going to replace those guys or use their slots to be able to, re- to replace them. So um, I think even if this team winds up 10th, but they struggle to kind of get in here down the stretch, I think they are going to have to, as alpha pointed out, take a more realistic uh, look at whether or not they need to make dramatic changes and and they have to be honest with themselves as to whether they believe they can be contenders again yeah uh i think that was all pretty well said uh just kind of reading through some of the other comments and you know i don't know if it would work to do it this way because we never have done it this way before but uh if we want to play any sounds i could see if i could just play it off of my laptop and that sound would go through sure uh, steph had an interesting quote from just a couple of minutes ago. Uh, we could play the Steve Kerr cut first off the quote you. Let's read. do it. Yeah, let's play. Yeah. The, let's play them both, and then we'll get back into some more comments because I, I think the gist of tonight's game, and and we are doing Dubs OT here for KMBR, the sports leader. Right? The gist of the game tonight, or the big question coming off of the game tonight, was why the hell Steve Kerr didn't put Steph back in with nine minutes to go. So. Uh, yeah, if we can, if we can roll that up, just let me know when it's ready and, uh, ready to roll. All right, let's, let's do it. And if JD or the chat cannot hear it, uh, just let me know in the chat. Here is what Steve Kerr had to say, uh, saying that it wasn't a difference maker. Mm. Nope. I'm not hearing it. Yeah, I don't know if everybody else is, but I'm not. Okay. Yeah, maybe maybe it's a uh, got to do a separate download kind of thing. Yeah, no worries. I mean, it's yeah. again, what let, let's get to what what did uh what did so Steph, what Steph said say? was that he was a little bit surprised with his extended rest in the fourth quarter. And then he had a different quote uh where haven't heard this one yet. He was asked if it's realistic that he only plays 30 to 32 minutes considering where the Warriors are at in the standings. Yeah. And is that where, is that the, the, where he said uh, this, the situation will define itself pretty clearly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm not, I, were you playing it again? 
Or, no, I wasn't. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, he said, and, and I'm, I'm reading the quote right now. Uh, Steph had said the situation will define itself pretty clearly. It is in real time. Every game matters. We're inching closer to the other end of the standings. Uh, nobody's going to wave the white flag. If that means playing more minutes, I'll be ready to do that is the, the gist of, of what Steph had to say there. But again, we're not talking tonight. And this is the, this is the issue that I have with it. We're not talking tonight, Greg, about playing Steph 40. <laughs> we're not even talking about playing him 36. Uh, we're talking about basically playing him. I mean, what did he end up with? 30? He ended up with 30. We're talking about playing him 33. So, I mean, like what, like to me, there's like, what is that all about? I mean, would <laughs> that just, what is that all about? I don't know. Um, and I see, uh, where'd it go? Oh, and is Brown thinking, uh, it was a subtle shot at Kerr. I mean, listen, I think by and large, Steph and Steve Kerr have a, a great relationship I don't know if today he was frustrated at the decision and I, think he was. I don't know if Steph I don't know if Steph said put me in. Yeah, I mean, look, I I I think there was a little frustration there. I I no, no doubt. And again, I I didn't get a chance to I always like to watch it and see the body language and and all of that which we haven't had the the, the opportunity to to do as of yet, but uh just reading through the quote, I mean, not it's not good. And and again, like, again, we're not talking about 36 minutes. We're talking about 33 minutes. And I know it's a long trip and I know there's a back to back coming up and I know they're going on the road after coming home. And it's every other day or back to backs between now and three weeks from today when the regular season ends, there are a lot of freaking games coming up, but you know, you, you got to try to win the ones that are right there for you to win. And, and I, I don't even think it really matters the opponent. The Warriors have kind of shown that they play better on the road against everybody. They play better on the road against good teams than they do at home. Uh, And, and so on the road against bad teams, now there aren't really any bad teams other than, well, I guess there's still Charlotte and San Antonio at the back end of the trip, but you know, they've shown that on the road, they will, they will beat bad teams much more consistently and, and, and turn those games into blowouts more on the road than they do at home. So I think there's a pathway toward, you know what? You go all in in these first three if you think you have a chance to win them, and if that means that the Charlotte game, you have to give Steph an extra rest when you're down by four, if you're down by four in the fourth quarter, then do it in that game. Like that's my That would be my sort of counter to what, to what uh, Steve Kerr uh, you know, had, to, had to say there. And, and so, uh, yeah, uh, you know, tough, 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 tough night. Uh, as far as uh, where the Warriors are at. And it look, it keeps getting worse. I mean, they're only a game ahead of the Rockets now. So it's, you know, they're they're going to have to figure some things out. And again, now the, now the true, you know, Minnesota grinds you, Miami grinds you, Orlando's a young team that, that can grind you athletically. Uh, and so, and oh, by the way, I, I just happened to learn this because I was watching Orlando play Sacramento yesterday afternoon, Orlando played the Kings last night. They don't play till Wednesday. (laughs) Orlando played last night at home. They're in the middle of an eight game road trip, or I'm sorry, eight game homestand. Orlando's in the, that was the fourth game of an eight game homestand. They lost to the Kings. They had won the first three and they had today off tomorrow off and Tuesday off. before they play the Warriors on on Wednesday night and then basically continue the the rest of you know, the final four games of the trip. So uh, they're going to have a, a rest advantage with the Warriors on not only a back to back, but the Warriors are going to play two games in the in the stretch in which the the, the Magic had played the 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 one, you know, the one game last night in their next game on Wednesday against the Dubs. Uh, I have a comment that I just like from Andis Brown. Yeah, let's and go. Let's I don't do want it. to get into the whole Steph Curry psychoanalyzing and mm-hmm. make that the theme of our show, but I do think that this is a really good question about Steph and if he feels pressure that they got to find a way to get in and so that the Warriors can keep the big three intact because Steph Curry's got to answer some tough questions this season. I mean, Joe Lacob has a lot of decision-making power, but – they're going to go to you, the center of the franchise, and figure out what they want this next season to be. I saw an earlier comment as well 
from Douglas Mikes. And I don't know if Douglas Mikes was with us yesterday, but this was uh, this was kind of the question that you asked and kind of answered for us, JD. Yeah, what? Uh, let me let me see. Here. I switched screens there. Uh, Douglas Mikes, this organization has rode the fence on the two timeline thing. They need to make a decision this summer. Is Kaminga good enough to be the second option or not? If not, go get somebody who is. I think that's the crux of the entire summer. I think that's the number one question for the entire summer. And yes, do you believe Kaminga is a superstar in in a few years? And if you do, you hang on to him. If you don't, because here's the thing. If you do and you hang on to him, then you're going to be able to build around him in two or three years, right? If you don't, or if, if you don't think he is, then keeping him for the next two years in a way kind of doesn't matter because if you don't think he's a superstar, then you need to go get somebody that you're going to pair with Steph and you're going to be tearing it down to the studs in three years anyway. So it's like you can't have your cake and eat it too. Like there isn't a world. So, you know, I, I've sort of put it this way. And again, I think we know the answer to the first part of this, which is, you know, and I've, I've phrased it as there are two ways the Warriors can get back into title contention next year. Uh, there are two ways. And one is Kaminga becomes an all-star slash superstar next year. The other is, they trade him for a guy who is an all-star slash superstar, and he becomes the number two next to Steph Curry. And you build around those two for the next two two years, basically, with Steve Kerr as the head coach, and then you and you roll roll with it, and then that way. So, uh, yeah, they're going to have to have an honest conversation. I mean, our whole Just Dub show, we invite everybody to to go to the KMBR YouTube page uh, from yesterday because I think a lot of the things we've discussed here in the last few minutes really play. And check out Just Dubs, which we do Or every... if you're driving and you got a big commute, yep. pop that baby on in the car. Yep, you can pop that baby in as a podcast as well. Uh, and yeah, Just Dubs with John Dickinson and Greg Silver. And you can pop that baby in and, and listen to the, the conversation that we had yesterday about all the big, uh, the difficult conversations the Warriors have ahead. And, and it starts with Steph. It really does. Uh, so, you know, we have to... We have to, he's going to have to, I think in some ways, uh, not atone, but answer for, and I think Steve Kerr has to answer for it. I think Dunleavy has to, like, I think they all have to answer for the decision that was made to go all in on the veterans. Like I didn't even necessarily, this coming into this year, basically the Steph, Clay, Draymond running it back with Steve, believe that with a little balance, this team could still contend. Like they were adamant about that from the night they got beat in LA last May and it didn't work. And so, and and I think we can already say it didn't work because this team has been much more dependent on the younger players ability to play well uh, because the, some of the veteran players hadn't played well. So I, I think at this point, like that's, already been sort of a fail. And so we move forward now. And I, I think when you make that decision and I'm, I'm thinking season ending press conference here, I am thinking, you know, Dunleavy and Kerr and, and, you know, the exit interviews with Steph and Draymond and everybody else. Uh, you know, the question has to be asked at that point, like, you know, do you admit that it didn't work? And, and do you think you have to go in a different direction now because it didn't work? Well, I think that obviously I'm not defending the decision to stick with the veterans because I think it's more than fair to say hasn't worked out to what they thought it would. But I can also understand a little bit of the philosophy because when you consider some of the flaws that the team had last year, I mean, Clay wasn't perfect, but he led the le uh, league in three-pointers. Draymond was, what, second-team all-defense, and Steph Curry was still very, very good. So, again, not defending it and saying that it aged well but if you just take it back to 11 months ago, 12 or, 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 you know, 13, 13 months ago, 13, 14, I can understand where it's coming from. Like a lot of the problems were bad chemistry, uh, not the best attitudes. Jordan Poole was not effective and we could get into a whole discussion about that, except as you've mentioned, he did help the fact that the Warriors could win home games against bad teams when Steph Curry missed 26 games on the season. So that was effective for Poole. But 
Steph, Clay, and Dre was not the core issue last year other than Draymond punching his own teammate and the fallout that that created. No, no doubt. I, I understand the decision, and it's it's honestly the same decision that I would have made. Uh, I, I understood it, um, but it you also have to admit – that you got it wrong when you got it wrong. And, and, you know, I, I think, and that doesn't mean that next year they have to necessarily go younger. <laughs> it, you know, it just means that you have to have an honest conversation. To me, it's more, it, it's not a, a, a veteran versus youth debate. It, to me, it's more of a, have an honest assessment of where you are. Like they didn't have an honest assessment last year of where they were. Right. They, they, they took everything in and they made their decision but the reality was they were off in their assessment of what they were. That's not, a again, a youth versus, you know, uh, experience debate necessarily this year. To me, this year, it's more, do you believe in what you've had since January 30th, right? Like, do you believe I- that, you know, that mix is capable of being something? And I think what we're seeing here over the last week, and we may continue to see over the next week, is the answer to that is no. Uh, the answer to that is, oh, well, that was nice and it was different, but the reality is, and I, I haven't done the math on it, but, uh, and it's funny, I was I brought it up earlier and I don't have it. Anyway, I, I kind of lost track of it when Steph went out and then and then they started losing games last week, but uh, I'm, I'm looking at it right now as far as just where the Warriors were at uh, and then where they were, let's see, 2023 Warriors, uh, where they were. Do we have any comments we can get to here while we're, while I'm looking this thing up? Um, what stands out to you? I, I got a quote from Draymond, uh, and that is, we keep losing and that's not encouraging. <laughs> Yeah. No, I mean, again, the one thing that I do think is good, I, I'm not a punt on the whole thing guy. Like, and 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 I will say, I, I think I love the fact that the Rockets for this reason are on their heels because if the Rockets, let's say, were five games back and the Warriors were locked in to the 10 seed, I think they would basically shut it down half the time. Like I do think it would be like, all right, nobody's going to play in, in Orlando and nobody's going to play the second game in Dallas and nobody's going to play in Portland because there's a back to back and we'll come back and let everybody, you know, the fans will see Steph and everybody for the home game and the second of the back to back here in a couple weeks before the season. And we'll just win our games and basically treat it like a training camp. Like, like I'm, I'm actually glad the Warriors can't do that because the truth is I want to see how it ends. I want to see them pushed and I want to see how it ends. They're going to have enough enough. If they don't make it, whether they end up out on April 14th or out on April 17th or out on April 19th, or if they somehow make a run and end up out on May 5th, whatever it winds up being, whatever it winds up being, I want to see it. I don't want to see the, uh, you know, I, I don't want to see them just kind of punting and just kind of not letting everybody know where it's going to wind up. And because the Rockets are right on their ass, they're not going to be able to. So, uh, you know, we're going to, we're going to see how they handle it. We're going to see how much they care. We're going to see if they want to, to, you know, still fight for something, even though things, things get tough. And we're also going to see if it frays some of the chemistry that it looks like this, this thing, you know, this team has built over the last month and a half to two months, right? Cause everything was harmonious, right? Everything was the young guys and the veteran guys are getting along now. And you've got clay and Draymond saying Kaminga's the future of the franchise. And like a bunch of things that are really easy to say when you've got a really good record over a stretch. Not so easy to say those things. I think the truth serum comes in. Like, I I want a raw, real assessment of the last – of what this Warriors team has been this year, and we're going to get it over the next three weeks because they're going to have to be fighting for something. So we're going to see if they quit. If they quit, we're going to find out. And guess what? If they quit, then dramatic changes are coming. Dramatic changes are coming. Nothing's off the table. But you know what? 
everybody's going to know that the dramatic changes should be coming at that particular point in time. Like we're, there's going to be no faking it here. Like you're either going to win and you're going to make it and you're going to make a run or you're going to go out in a bucket of flames and you're going to have to own it. And there may be dramatic changes, even if this ends with a little bit of a bandaid on it, like, Oh, they got into the playoffs and lost in a gentleman's sweep. Like, I think still big changes are coming, right? You would think. I mean, I, I you would think. But again, what is what does that mean? Like, that's the other thing. I'll, and I, like what? Like, and our, our buddy Robert, Robert chimed in. Honestly, the Warriors not even getting the ten seed. Probably the best thing for the franchise right now. May open Lakeham's eyes further to him realizing they need main major changes. Uh, yeah. What are the major changes though? Clay doesn't come back. Chris Paul gets traded for nothing. <laughs> I mean, like Wiggins is gone and you got to find a new three. I mean, Wiggins, I mean, like, that's what I mean. Like again. Yeah. Wiggins. I mean, Clay not coming back. Yes. Would be a major change, but it doesn't necessarily make you better. Uh, you know, Chris Paul not being back might make sense financially. If you don't use his slot to bring another player back, but it doesn't make you better. Uh, so, you know, Wiggins, Adi- you know, addition by subtraction, maybe, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't, doesn't make you better. You, uh, you catching bugs in there? You got to fly? Trying, trying to get the lights back going. Oh, I think the, okay. I think the sensor's I, off. What about you, you, you were doing the clapper. I was like, I look like you were trying to catch a, catch a bug or something in your, oh yeah, yeah, yeah I got you. I got you. Uh, so yeah, what would the major changes be? I think that's interesting. Uh, another thing that was interesting and I, holy lessons, chimes in with a couple why call that play for clay uh again i I think he's probably the you need a three so he's the number two option that's not named steph and again that was you know they kind of took what the defense gave him but i thought it was a it was a good play uh to get the ball in and i I thought clay got a good look but he but he missed the look i didn't really have a problem with with the the play to clay uh holy lessons chimes in here kaminga looked upset he wasn't in at the end too I didn't notice that. It wouldn't surprise me, uh, but I I didn't see that. Did you notice that at all? Like, did you notice a shot of Kaminga not because he he was not a finishing player tonight, really for the first time in a while. Uh, it, it was you know Wiggins was out there, uh, basically GP two, yeah, Wiggins GP two, uh, Thompson Curry. Uh, yeah, Thompson Curry won two. Basically, Wiggins. It, it was basically Peyton played over over Kaminga at the end, and Clay played over Pajemski at the end, and then CP3 came in for Peyton. Uh, so CP3 was playing over Kaminga uh, at at the end uh, as well. So I, you know, again tonight I thought it was the right call. Kerr hadn't done it much. Uh, you know, I, I I don't think Kaminga was bad necessarily. Uh, at all. I thought Kaminga was fine tonight. I, I don't think it was his, his best game. Uh, but I, I think you look at tonight and you just kind of go through who was playing well, who wasn't. And, you know, Clay, uh, you, you were going to have Clay out there because uh, he had 16 points. Steph was obviously going to be out there. Draymond was going to be out there. Wiggins is the three. So Wiggins being out there had nothing to do with Kaminga and Wiggins. I, I actually thought, thought Wiggins was good Wiggins, tonight. Yeah. Wiggins played better than Kaminga tonight, but, it, but Wiggins is the three. So it's again, it wasn't Wiggins or Kaminga. Wiggins was just out there. It was clay over Pajemski. It was Wiggins in his starting spot, starting slash finishing spot. It was Curry and Draymond in their spots. It was again, it was GP two who played really well tonight. I thought, despite seven assists, eight boards, had a steal. I, I thought GP2 played pretty well tonight. He was a plus eight, which was uh, him and Draymond were the, were the top two uh, uh, as far as plus minus for the, for the Warriors in, in, in this one. So, um, again, I don't, I don't think it's a big deal that Kaminga didn't finish the game tonight. Uh, I also didn't notice that, that he was upset, although, again – he has a tendency to get upset. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me. Although I think if he wasn't out there, I think it would be a little, it would be a little out of bounds if he was upset. Yeah. um, I I would think so too, but I think losing just sucks no matter what. Like, I mean, like we say with the hard conversations, I, you know, the funny thing about the last 
couple of weeks of shows and probably what's going to be the next couple of weeks of shows is we're probably going to be saying a lot of the similar things just in slightly different ways. And I think that losing is frustrating. It brings out the worst in everybody. Winning gives you some luxuries. It gives you the opportunity to compliment younger players that maybe you weren't gelling with or older players that maybe you were frustrated by or a coach that you lost faith in earlier in the year and all sorts of this stuff. Yep. But when you go back to losing and bad habits, you do not have the privilege of avoiding hard conversations. Like we're going to say it many, many, many times over the course of the next couple months. And the Warriors are fully deep in the quicksand of hard conversation zone. Got to happen. Wiggins, Steph, Kerr, Don Levy, like. Yeah, it's it's everybody. I mean, it, it really is. Uh, and then we got you know, Robert chiming in about bigs. Uh, if uh, all of that, again, I'm not getting into the bigs conversation tonight. Uh, a lot of back and forth. I don't know why a lot of back and forth about the Kings tonight. Somehow that got, it has nothing to do with us, but it got, it got going in the chat. I think there was maybe a Kings fan and a warrior fan going back and forth about whatever. Uh, Otis bird, the third JD is pissed. I feel him on this. It's not good right now. Hey, it's just a matter of being real. It's just a matter of you got to be real. And tonight's a night where, again, I, I just I want to see everything come out in the wash. Like, I don't want to be faked into something like I want it raw. Like, you know what? If Kaminga doesn't finish a couple games between now and the end of the year and he truly is disgruntled about it. Well, guess what? Then you got to ask yourself a bigger picture question about whether he's somebody you truly want to have around like that. And that's just reality or that you truly because I'll say this. If you think, and again, I don't, I don't want to belabor this too much because we don't know, and I actually don't even really, like, if something's come out on social media or he said something about being upset, that's one thing. Uh, so I don't want to, I really don't want to, but how do you think after the Warriors pay him $130 million this offseason in extension money that'll kick in the follow, how, like, how do you think he's going to be then if he's not finishing a game? Like, he's already basically taken on the coaching staff and kind of won. Like, how do you think it's going to be then? Like, it, you know, that's not... That's not nothing, right? It's something that has to be dealt with. And there always is a cost benefit analysis as to, you know, a player being happy and, you know, with his role. Cause I, I think personally, the Kaminga thing's pretty, fr I think it's fragile. I'm just going to say I not fragile in that, that they don't want him. I think they do in a perfect world, want to keep him and, and continue to build around him. Like I, I do think that that is a thing, but I'm not buying the whole, he was pissed off. Him and Kerr worked it out. I think, sure, for the time being, they did because Kaminga has been playing a lot and he's played well and they've been, for the most part, winning. But it, like, now they got to pay him or not pay him. And that's going to create, you know, now he, there's an expectation in his mind that he's just going to be out there every single night. And you know what? He's almost to the point where he's going to be out there every single night. But I still don't think he's quite at the point where it's every single night, no matter what, he's going to be out there. Like, if he's not playing well and other players are, then I think he may not be out there every single night. How is he going to handle that? So, I, you know, that again, that's a that's not really in the top 10 things off of tonight, but it's something to file away and keep an eye on between now and the end of the regular season. I'm, I don't want to create a judgment about it tonight, but might not be the only time here in these last – 11 games or whatever it is. Is it 11? Is it 10? Is it 12? How many games are there? 12, 12 games left. 12. All right. Yeah. Uh, and then I see newest comment. Uh, the answer would be yes, because if you're trading Kaminga, you're sacrificing your future to try to win now. So well, yes, older than 20, for... older than 22. I'm not saying necessarily 32, but a, but... But a proven player. Yeah, no, no doubt. Uh, Brandon Johnson, why is Curry only playing 30 minutes in a game so crucial? Should be playing 38 to 42. Again, I think there's a happy medium there. I get people are pissed off about it. I think Kerr bungled it. Uh, I, I don't think it had to be 38 to 42. Tonight it could have been 34. And I, I think the Warriors would have had a shot. to. Eat. I would have liked to have known whether those three minutes would have mattered. They, maybe they wouldn't have. But I would have liked to have known if those three minutes at the top of the fourth quarter uh, would have would have mattered or not. Uh, and and so, yeah, all of those things are, are, are problematic. We got people in the chat. Uh, Enrique Rivera, my fams. I'm just going to shout some people out. AJ Cruz, 75. WTF, they lost again. <laughs> yes, they did. 
uh, lose again. Uh, Otis Bird the third, we appreciate you. Uh, Mickey D, Houston one game back. Yeah, and Houston's playing Portland tomorrow, uh, and they're hot. Uh, the Warriors did need that game. There's no question. Uh, the Rockets have been, yeah, the Rockets have been scorching hot. The Rockets have won eight in a row, and they are they are crushing it uh, over the last over the last couple of weeks. Vince C uh, with the put that one back up. I like that one. Vince C with the uh, uh, yeah, Warriors. That's yeah, not great. Um, you know, Robert brings up an interesting point. He says Rockets will be a top eight seed for, for sure next year. Memphis is going to be back with something to say too, no doubt. That's the other part of it. Uh, you know, is you anytime you're in that bottom half of the West. So anytime I think you're like, you know, nine to 15, let's just say, and the Warriors are, are definitely going to finish the season that way. We'll see if they play their way in or not, but they're definitely going to be anywhere between nine and, and 15. That much they've basically, they have clinched in, in you know, my mind. Anytime you're nine to 15, it's not only the people above you that you got to worry about. <laughs> and I think that's a great point, like about the, the Rockets, the Grizzlies, uh, you know, Utah might be a little farther uh, away, but all you need to do is look at the you know, Minnesota last year was a play in team and they vaulted. Oklahoma City last year was a play in team and they vaulted basically into to be in two of the two of the top three that kicks other teams down a notch that a lot of them were still you know, better than, better than you were. I mean, and, and it does become a question of, and, and I'll even, th- I'm going to even throw in another one. Uh, San Antonio is going to get another high pick and, uh, and, and a they second. may get another player. E- exactly. And, and they may get another player. So that I think is going to be, uh, you know, important. I mean, you know, Houston, Memphis, and San Antonio would be three teams that I would look at to where if you're not getting better, if you're the Warriors, then you're getting worse. And so, you know, what what ultimately do you want to do? And it gets back, uh, it gets back to, you know, that conversation that, that we have to have. Yeah, we're gonna go about another five, 10 minutes uh here. It's John Dickinson, it's Greg Silver. Uh Greg's got to get over to be a part of the postgame Giants coverage on the Cambiar Airwaves, the Giants in Sacramento tonight, playing a exhibition against the triple a river cats. And then they're going to play the A's a couple of, couple of times. And then uh, they're going to get things going for real on Thursday. Wow. Already the already baseball season in a, in a big way. And uh, looking forward to that. Uh, the, the giants have a, have a good energy about them uh, at least with, with four days to go here before uh, the beginning of the season. Uh, yeah. I, looking through some of the chats here. Uh, queen of no size, the CP three clay lineup wasn't great either. Got down in the fourth Curry and Dre should have been subbed in earlier. Yeah. Curry and Dre should have been, uh, subbed in earlier. We had a few people, there are people going back and forth about Kaminga. He looks spooked. He didn't look spooked. Uh, odd, odd stuff there. Uh, again, I didn't see anything as it, as it related to, to Kaminga Douglas Mike's. They either got to go all in on Steph's window or blow it up. I'm not watching some middling team because Lakeup and crew decided to half-ass the offseason. Yeah, they have to they have to make a freaking decision. They have to make a, a, a freaking decision in a in a big way. Um and and you know, I think the next three weeks are, are basically gonna decide uh, what's going on. I, I do think the Kings Warriors thing was funny <laughs> talking about somebody said, our, I, I, somebody said, I, uh, uh, I think it was, I can't remember who it was, but it was one of our regulars uh, that said, I troll the Kings. I don't troll the Kings. I don't troll the Kings on here. And yes, I have made it clear. They're better than the Warriors this year. That's they've, that's been apparent. It looked like maybe the Warriors a couple weeks ago might have a chance to run them down, but no, uh, they're they're much more consistent, and uh, they they won in Orlando without playing their best game, and Orlando hadn't lost at home in a while. Uh, a couple people saying where was Kaminga uh, at at the end? Yeah, no, I mean, 
again, we talked about that. Uh, I, I'm, I don't think tonight is the night to, to maybe, you know, question that. But again, I think there are a lot of people out there with Kaminga that, that look at it as well. No, he's a dude now he's just out there no matter what. Uh, and for the most part, I think that that has been uh, the truth here. Uh, so yeah, it, it's going to be interesting. Uh, FL dubs fan can Lake and Kerr still rely on the core for next year. Uh, if we don't make the play in logic says, no, they will be a year older. Again, it's it, it can't just be the core. Uh, it has to be it has to be how do you enhance that? And Steph's getting a little older and you need to offset. You, you need to plan for him missing more games next year than he has this year. Uh, all of those things, I, I, I think, are are uh, obviously uh, going to be very, very, very uh, important as uh, we, we wind things down uh, on 2023 24 and and wind things into uh the remainder of this road trip which is you know it's miami and orlando no picnic uh charlotte and san antonio are games they have to get uh and again now they're they're fighting basically for the 10 seed uh and and maybe the nine but basically they're trying to hold off uh houston to try to to get the job done there. Uh, all right. Final thoughts uh, for you, Greg, and and or maybe some comments that that you think I missed. Really appreciate everybody watching. Uh, we've had a good crowd in here uh, on on the YouTube page tonight. Uh, really, really appreciate it. But uh, yeah, Greg, some some final thoughts or, or comments to you before we we wrap things up. No, just uh, getting ready to roll over to Giants post game, and I say this. I promise, as more serious than morbid sarcasm. But please tune into as many shows as you can because we don't really know how many there are going to be left. There will be at least 12, possibly 13, maybe 14 or more. But at the bottom line is uh, it's been really fun to do a lot of these this season. And JD has been an awesome carrier of the torch for something new. I'm glad we gotten to build this from the ground up and we're going to make this even better next year. So whatever, whatever this Warriors team may look like then as well. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know. no, it's it, look, we're going to, we're going to finish strong. There's 12 games to go. We're going to be on uh, after all of them. Uh, majority of them on the radio. A few are going to be not uh, on the radio uh, as was the case tonight. I think Tuesday is going to be a, another dubs OT uh youtube twitch and and twitter stream show but uh, some of those shows have been uh our, our highest downloaded shows some of those shows have been our highest viewed shows uh we had a really good uh group uh tonight a lot of people wanting to vent and and be frustrated and and you know just share in the in the conversation so no we we've got you covered here between now and whenever this thing ends and uh look we're not going anywhere either we're we got we got big things ahead for, for next season. It's not like we're, we're ditching the dubs. Uh, you know, it's going to be a fascinating, fascinating uh, off season. We're, we're just getting started as far as our big time coverage here for, for KMBR, the sports leader. So uh, Greg, thanks to you. We'll let you get off and uh, handle your giants duties. And uh, we'll talk to you on Tuesday. That's a four thirty tip warriors and the heat from Miami. So look for us about 645 or seven o'clock and uh, we'll, we'll probably go from 645 to about eight. Uh, and, you know, we'll see how things go. You never know. Uh, we'll, we'll at least get you an hour to uh, an hour and a half before Greg has to get off and handle some, some giants duties on, on that night uh, as well. A uh, big part of, of everything uh, Greg Silver is. Uh, so, uh, but a pleasure for you to be a part of this show with me. Uh, I really appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. And again, we're not done yet. We're back Tuesday uh, with Dubs OT. For Greg, I'm JD, KMBR, the sports leader.